Hello fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of March 22nd, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, it is an active astrological week, and I do think that a lot of us out there are going to feel a shift of energy. That alone makes this week worth it. But there are still some intense energies that we are going to continue to ride at this time. But they are balanced in important ways, in incredibly valuable ways, with inspiration, with hope, and a sense of being touched by compassion, if not miracles. As much as the energy can invite us to go into a place of our fear, there's also energy now magnified that invites us to go into a place of love, of universal love and love for ourselves, of awareness of how it is that big blessings can be playing out now. It will be right around Tuesday that we are going to have a new moon. Now this new moon is happening in the sign of Aries and whenever a planet moves into a cardinal sign, into cardinal energy, it represents a shift of seasons on the one hand, right? It's a brand new season. Cardinal signs begin a season. And as, for example, the sun moves into a cardinal sign, it marks an important moment on the wheel of the season. So for example, when the sun moves into the sign of Aries, that is the first day of spring. That is the spring equinox in the Northern hemisphere. When the sun moves into the sign of Cancer, that is the summer solstice, a brand new season, the beginning of summer. When the sun moves into the sign of Libra, that is the autumn equinox, and that is the beginning of the autumn season in the Northern Hemisphere. And when it is that the sun moves into the sign of Cancer, that is the winter solstice, that is the first day of winter. So these are very important and sensitive cardinal points as we call them as part of cardinal signs and so that shift of energy that change of energy really could take us in all kinds of directions but when we look at the fact that the sign of aries at its essence has to do with self it has to do with truth the truth of what you feel the truth of what gives you a spark of what incites you of what feels as if it energizes you well, it is now that this new moon is going to have us and encourage us to feel different in some way. Now, that could go either way. And I do think that we are entering a time where we may very well see extremes playing out in humanity, as tends to be the case in times of uncertainty. So one thing that I feel uh, speaks to how high, how loving, how inspired this time can be, how we see true examples, not just of altruism, but a genuine sense of being reflected in each other, of understanding the other as ourselves, is the beautiful connections that Venus is going to be making now. At the start of the week, it will be Venus connecting in harmony with Neptune. At the end of the week, Venus will connect in supreme harmony with Jupiter. And so on one level, right, this energy is one of love, universal love, certainly romantic love as well. I think that more people are going to be open to wanting to uh, have those types of connections at a time like this. But this is also a sense of prosperity. Venus right now is in its home sign of Taurus and more of us are going to have our eye towards where it is that we can recognize the prosperity playing out in our lives. And most often, many times, we think of prosperity in terms of money, right? That's a, a part of the world that we have created. But of course, there are all kinds of ways to identify and to celebrate prosperity in our lives. and. For all of us, whatever our forms of prosperity may be there, they are going to feel heightened now, and the awareness of them is going to feel heightened now. And this is also energy of joy. Wanting lightness in and of itself welcomes in levity, lighter moments. And I do think that it is going to be these Venusian 
energies that on the one hand invite levity, but it is also a very grounded energy. It is embodied. These are earth signs after all that are being highlighted with Venus and Jupiter. The compassion part of it, of course, is that Neptunian energy now. And so we are all going to be feeling that sense of embodiment and wanting to be here right now to enjoy our lives as much as possible, even when it feels hard and even when it feels intense. And where it is that we need to connect with a source of security to know that we're going to be okay in practical ways. Well, I do think that, especially Venus speaking with Jupiter at the end of the week is going to help a whole lot in that regard. It's going to help us to tap into an energy of safety and consistency. But we've got other energies playing out this week as well. As I said, it is a time of extremes and during times of extremes, we get to see what we're really made of. We get to see what's really inside of us. And one of the things that represents the other side of the extreme is Mars meeting Pluto in the sky. Now, this connection tends to happen about every two years. And when it does, it represents a time of heightened emotion, yes, but an intensity that we can feel. And we are in intense times. And this may be a time when we are feeling that sense of insecurity that much more on the surface. But at the same time, there is a determination now. Now, what is worth being determined about? Mars is the ruling planet of Aries, and it is in the dark of the moon, the day before the new moon, that this connection will perfect between Mars and Pluto. And so there is this sense now of wanting to take initiative, wanting to be strategic, but at the same time, an awareness of where it is that perhaps our impulses are feeling fear, are feeling that sense that things can change. They are changing. But within the change, we have an opportunity to find calm. We have an opportunity to find something strong and consistent within us. But what this week says to me as I look at it is how love and fear and anger being an expression of fear, how it's ultimately part of a journey that we're all on. And I was thinking about, as I looked at the sky, about trauma and about pain and the pain that we can go through. Now, a lot of times we think about this in terms of childhood, for example, right? Childhood traumas. But it is in a sense, if I may say, and I'm, I, I want to be mindful of language, but I think that a lot of people right now, regardless of you know, whether or not you have a secure job and you know you're gonna be okay financially, uh, whether or not you're in a space and a place where you have to um, stay home, right? You can't go out and you have to work online and whether or not your job even allows that depending on what you do. I want to recognize that there is a type of trauma that collectively we are experiencing right now. The pain of the, the fragility of the lives that we have created. Seeing that is painful. Having to address forces that feel unfair is painful. It's what Freud called the cruelty of fate. That there's so much that we could do and there's so much that we can do right and yet there are moments in life where we just don't have power. And a part of growing, a part of becoming whole, now that's my paraphrase of Freudian ideas, but a part of that is ultimately reconciling ourselves with the fact that the cruelty of fate does exist and finding acceptance within it, finding ways to engage it and address it but to know that the psyche is strong and will be able to. That is how true maturity happens. True adulthood is entered according to Freud. And so we are experiencing this collective trauma and all of us are dealing with it in our own ways. And 
I was reflecting on the trauma that we might experience, uh, for example, childhood trauma. And we can see this come forward in different ways. What often happens with childhood trauma at first and what we may see now and have been seeing is fear and anger, right? First it's fear and then it gives way to anger. And I do think, I know that a lot of people make jokes about uh, toilet paper. I know that, for example, in the US and in Canada to a certain extent as well, and other places in the world right now, um, it has been this phenomenon of toilet paper selling out. And what does that mean? Well, it is actually um, very clear when you look at it from a psychological perspective. People are motivated by knowing that they're going to be okay on the very basic levels, on our most base levels. And when we look at what on a most base level our human experience requires, right? It requires us to, uh, to eat. It requires us to go to the washroom. It requires us to rest, right? To have a space that we can rest. Sleep is a part of the most basic human functions that we are going to uh, navigate as part of the human experience. And so when you see this as, as much as it can be uh, amusing, as much as it can be disheartening as well, as much as it can be confusing, it is ultimately that deeper need to know that on a base level they're going to be okay that toilet paper represents. And so with Mars meeting Pluto, we may see that heightened, that fear, that wanting to know that they're going to be okay. And so some of that behavior may be there, but here's the thing. It is a stage. When we look at why it is that, for example, children who experience trauma, why is it that some of them end up more compassionate, more loving? You can't know genuine compassion and empathy unless in some way you have been there, even if just it's archetypally or symbolically, even if the exact, uh, exact details of an experience aren't necessarily lined up, normally it does require some difficulty and the transcendence of it that leads us towards accessing the higher qualities of what it means to be human. But in order to get there, very often what's overlooked is the journey it takes to get there. And part of the journey is transcending, moving through, allowing ourselves to feel fear. Transcending and moving through, allowing ourselves to feel anger. It is the most natural thing, but the people who get stuck in that stage of anger, well, they are the people who fill, for example, prisons. Those are the people who perpetuate that anger, who perpetuate that trauma on others, who don't see beyond themselves because anger doesn't allow you to see beyond yourself and your base needs. But those emotions are there for a reason. I do believe that emotion is a tool towards spiritual growth and spiritual strength. Our emotions point the way towards our karmic lessons. And our karmic lessons are always to move towards the more full embodiment of love and wisdom to the best of our ability. It's never going to be perfect. We're not going to get there fully over the course of this lifetime. But if we use this life well, we can get pretty close. And what it means to use this life well is to question what we feel, to explore it to be willing to sit in emotions that are sometimes difficult with a genuine desire to understand. And in understanding, we raise the energy. And in understanding, when we see it in others, we're able to relate, we're able to see ourselves. And that ability to see ourselves in others is the definition of compassion. It's the definition of love itself. And so with a week like this, with this very strong cardinal Aries energy that sometimes can speak to anger, that's going to be heightened that much more given under the light of this new moon or rather under the dark of this new moon. 
Mars is meeting Pluto, intensifying and activating that energy. This is an opportunity for all of us. This is a great invitation to transcend. This is that moment where we get to move through something that feels challenging within, possibly like a physical feeling of fear, of anger, of uncertainty. We get to move through it. And on the other side, if we are willing to move through it, we will find love and compassion and bliss. That is part of the energy I'm seeing playing out this week. And we are going to be inspired towards it. And the truth is, the more it is that you in your own life, even if you are at home and you're not interacting with anybody else, you in your own life, choosing to transcend your fear, choosing to learn through your anger, choosing to come out on the other side, to do the work to come out on the other side, you doing that work for you, that ends up giving other people not only permission to do the same, right? Instead of indulging that, that uh, energy of fear, because fear is addictive. It is a base emotion for a reason, right? There's something alluring about it. There's something intoxicating about anger as well and expressing it and channeling it. But it is ultimately also very childish. And what I mean by that is not that you aren't justified to feel whatever you feel, that what you feel is sacred, period. It is part of your journey towards greater love and greater wisdom. But there's a reason that it is the energy of Aries, the first sign of the Zodiac that speaks to uh, this very immediate expression like anger. And it is ultimately a great opportunity for us to move beyond that, to get to a place of empowerment. And we empower ourselves through inquiry and inquiry allows that transcendence and allows a choice. It allows us to reprogram our most basic instincts and our most base instinct. It may be fear. That's kind of how we're hardwired. Right? Up until very recently in human history, if you think about it, the thousands and tens of thousands of years of human history, this notion, this idea that we could live according to higher principles, that we can choose our responses, that it wasn't fight or flight like constantly. This is a very new thing for us as human beings. But because we are older souls than ever before, it is also the case that more of us have done the work of transcendence. And if one person has done the work, it makes it easier energetically for someone else to do the same work as well. Now there is a movement happening in Canada and it is called care mongering. I have been uh, keeping tabs with what is happening in Canada right about now. I was supposed to be in Canada visiting my parents, but of course, my parents and I kind of decided that it was best for me to stay put, uh, not just for me, but for them as well to stay here in Mexico uh, because they are in their 70s. And so that is where we are right now in terms of my personal situation with my parents. But I have been keeping tabs, close tabs with not only what is happening with my parents, but what is happening in Canada as well. And in Canada right now, there is this movement that is being um, popularized called care mongering. And it is this idea of going out of your way to adamantly care for others, to put yourself out there, to be a force, even online, to be a force flooding people with love and positive comments and letting them know that they're not alone, showing up for people that you don't even know might never even get to know beyond a moment when you help them out. And that's it. There's something very powerful in that. That is very much in alignment with more of what we are going to see this week. And so by doing the work ourselves energetically and literally, we allow other people to do it. But at the same time, allow yourself to walk that journey if you need. Because the truth is that 
as much as we want to make sure that the basics are there, the truth is that part of the human experience is to reconcile ourselves with the times when fate can feel very strong or fate can feel unfair. But it doesn't have to get us all caught up. It doesn't have to carry us away or consume us or overcome us. Like I said, it can be very addictive. It is a high in and of itself. But love is the higher high. Love gives us something within ourselves that we can see, that we can feel good about. It is love that ultimately allows us to see ourselves in the mirror and be at peace with that image that we have reflecting back. Now we do have something else happening besides Venus, besides Mars and Pluto and the new moon. I said it was an active astrological week and it's Mercury. And so at the very beginning of the week, Mercury will reach out in harmony with Uranus. If this sounds familiar, it is because as part of the larger Mercury retrograde season, we have had Mercury dancing in harmony with Uranus. This is the third and final connection that the two of these planets will share in the sky. At the very end of the week, Mercury will leave shadow and it's over, right? The cycle of Mercury retrograde is good and over. And again, Mercury is direct right now, but this is the wrap up. This is where we understand the events going back to February, going back to the beginning of February when Mercury first entered shadow, going back to the retrograde, it was right around the 17th of February that Mercury officially went retrograde. Well, it is gonna be this week that Mercury will return to that very part of the sky. So whatever was happening in the middle of February for you, now you see it differently. But more than that, I think that Mercury speaking with Uranus is quite fortunate, actually. It is an energy of uh, easy, breakthroughs of luck, of progress, of synchronicity that ends up changing our circumstances for the better in some way. And there's motivation to make the most of it. So where is it that an insight now can change your trajectory? Where is it now that if you are willing to be open to taking some action, it can have a wonderful, illuminating and changing effect for you. Where is it that if you are willing to have that conversation, that it can change a dynamic in ways that last well beyond this Mercury retrograde season certainly is over. I think Mercury moving through Pisces as Mercury has been for most of this retrograde season, Look, Mercury in Pisces in and of itself can make it feel like we're in a Mercury retrograde, especially right about now. I have felt myself in a Mercury retrograde, even though Mercury is direct, simply because Mercury is moving through the sign of Pisces. So we do have just a little bit longer to go with Mercury in this sign, but at least Mercury leaving shadow will allow us a lift that ultimately will give way to greater clarity greater connections, and a greater understanding of where it is that we can see things, perceive things, and connect ideas differently within ourselves so that they actually serve us. Where is it that we can focus our minds towards those higher, more loving principles we know that we deserve to embrace? What I love about this week for you, well, look, I do think whatever it is that is done from a place of peace is always more powerful, always. Regardless of how things may look on the surface, regardless of forces of power and show, many times that is a mask, right? That's a mask to hide the fear and the vulnerability uh, that one feels. But when there is peace, we are so much more effective in just about anything that we may do. And so where it is now that you are being asked to cultivate a sense of awareness, that is the pathway towards peace. But it's not just peace that's promised with a week like this. It is not just acceptance 
that is promised with a week like this. It is nothing less than love, karmic love, karmic blessings, karmic awakenings. The ultimate awakening that we can have is the understanding that we are each other. That is nirvana, right? That is the bliss that is promised from awakening. And a week like this can encourage us to glimpse that, to move towards that, and to own that more fully, to own that essential nature that we are, that is a part of who we are. And sometimes it actually is the journey there, that journey through fear, that journey through anger, that makes it so that the love that we have to give, the love that we can embody, is that much more a source of our true security, is that much more a force of power in our world and to others around us. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, thumbs up. It does mean so very much. It does really help the channel a lot. And if you would like to know how all of this stuff speaks to you and your sign, log on to the superstar space at nadiashaw.com and superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes every week and so much more including the brand new saturn specials which are now available for download on my website and in the superstar space as well free to superstars i hope that you love them uh, very quickly i want to say thank you for making prayers to the sky a number one new release on amazon in new age astrology with all my heart thank you so much for that it stayed number week all week so um, that was very exciting too because uh, amazon updates every hour on the hour they update the list of new releases and it stayed number one and then what pushed it out of number one just like yesterday or today uh, was a book on 2020 prophecies and I thought of course given what's happening in the world right now 2020 prophecies that's okay I I, I can totally understand that uh, but just from the bottom of my heart thank you so much and this book is now available wherever books are sold and I do have another book coming up very soon uh, called The Universe is Wise and Loving, Volume 1, The Nodes of the Moon. You can imagine with everything happening in the sky right now, I have a lot more to add to this, uh, and I'm feeling very inspired to do that about my understanding of a wise and loving universe. But anyways, if you get the advanced copy from me, you get a bunch of free gifts, over $200 worth of free gifts are available to you, some of them instantly, some of them coming up. So you can learn a lot about that and you can read a preview from this book now on my website, nadiashaw.com or theuniverseiswiseandloving.com. So you will get your advanced copy. It'll be shipped out in May and this book will be available on Amazon in uh, August 22nd. That is when it will be available more widely wherever books are sold. And Synchronicity University, next week I will be teaching uh, on Chiron through the signs and houses. If you are so inspired, you can check that out. Links in the description below. And I do have a free class coming up. Um, and this is actually something I'm doing with Astrology Hub. I am pairing up with Astrology Hub again. They are offering a, a webinar. And so wherever you are, you can join us absolutely for free. And I will link to that in the description below. And we will be talking about life purpose in the current context of where we are as a collective in the current context of what is happening in the sky and how it is that purpose connects us to uh, this larger collective understanding how it is that we can bring a clarity of our own purpose towards being uh, in my words a force of love and wisdom in the world and so i do hope that you will join us over a thousand people have already signed up for this uh, free webinar and I hope that you find value in it, and I hope that you love it. Now, of course, what I didn't mention is that Saturn did move into the sign of Aquarius 
depending on where you are on the planet at the very end of last week so saturday night or sunday is when that move took place i do have saturn specials available uh, there's one here on youtube i spoke for over an hour about what this energy means for us as a collective as well as the preview horoscope so i will link to that below and again the Saturn special for each and every sign is available uh, on my website for download or in the superstar space. Um, each video is a, as at least 20 minutes long. Some videos went all the way up to 30 minutes, depending on the sign, depending on what I had to say. So they do go into a lot of detail. It is going to be next week that we will reach an important and pivotal moment as part of the very beginning of the Saturn transit. We will fully be in it next week once Saturn meets Mars in the sky. And so we truly are on the precipice of important times, of changing times, and what this Saturn cycle is going to mean uniquely for you. Uh, well, that is something that I do uh, discuss, I touch on in the preview horoscopes on YouTube and of course, uh, on the videos, the special horoscopes that I mentioned. But what it means for the collective really is a, uh, this year is a redefining of what it means to be part of a collective, what it means to bring ourselves as individual together with others and we share a journey, what it is that together we want to manifest, what we want to move towards and where it is that even if physically we are not together, we are always actually connected in very real ways, in very practical ways. And so a lot of this is what I already spoke about for over an hour. Uh, and so I, again, I will link to that in case you didn't see it, but it has been one of my more popular videos. So thank you so much for that to everybody who has watched it. Uh, like I said, your uh, view, your like, your comment, your subscribe, your share, all of that does help the channel so much. And it does mean so very much to me to be some part of your sacred journey. Thank you so much for that. So yeah, because I made that video, I didn't talk about it so much in this video. Uh, I wanted to focus more on new things that I could talk to you about, uh, like all the wonderful things that are taking place in the sky now. And I do hope that you, for yourself and for all of us, you choose love. Love is so powerful. Love is more powerful than fear will ever be, could ever hope to be. There's a reason that fear and anger are considered base energies. When you sit in love, that bliss, that, that confidence of that, there's just no space. There's no space for those lower base energies because what you're doing then is that you really are accessing some of the best of what it means to be human, to be embodied. And to be here now at this time in human history, what a privilege on the precipice of a, a brand new chapter in human consciousness. The raising of human consciousness is happening right before our eyes. And that's something really exciting to behold. I'm really grateful. I'm so grateful to be some small part of that journey for you. Thank you. Thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.